G'day guys, just a quick preview of the while meeting. The uh, reason I wanted to do a, a quick video sort of was as it is a bit of a, a trap meeting and probably late betting and <clears throat> how horse sprayed in the yard are going to be very pivotal to a couple of them races so I thought I'd just point out a few things to look for. The first uh, race is for the three year olds over the thousand metres and there are a few interesting runners. Uh, Juice is the first one that I sort of wanted to have a, a look at. It was a nice type of horse that promised to come back a better horse this time in and off this trial and and how it, it appeared first up, it definitely does look to have come back at a nicer horse. It was going from this 735 metre trial straight up to 1300 metres on a sticky track, led pretty soft there and, and did cave in but looking to forgive it, possibly something went a miss there that we're not aware of and interesting that Cummings has brought it straight back to the thousand metres here. This is Juice in behind, hitting the line full of running. Um, behind some pretty classy types that would start very short in a race of this nature. Showed a lot of pace at Warwick Farm early here uh, and led these horses easily even though they're not going fast and I just have a, a good feeling that especially with the backing this horse received on this day and the continued late backing that uh, it's, it's a horse that may have choked down, got its tongue over the bit, something may have happened here and be very surprised if it doesn't run a much improved race. A quick look at number one and first starter off the one trial, 730 meter trial. Showed a bit of natural pace to lead them up. Um, this is an interesting horse for Wednesday that you probably want to take a look at. The, the leaders call the coppers. Fair enough trial, but really haven't learned a lot considering it's a 730 metre trial only trial and a little bit wary. There has been some early money for it. Uh, it did go up pretty big odds around the $15 mark. I'm not surprised to see it trim up a little bit, but a little bit scared of... Uh, this being a bit too deep a race for it, but wouldn't be surprised to see it run a race. So the other key first starter is this horse, Rockefeller. Two trials once before, one before, or one just after Christmas, 29th of December, came back the 18th of January. Um, the best part of each trial here is definitely the finish. Good to see them taking the horse away from home to trial. And like the way he sort of wants to find the line. And these horses are, are you know, we know quite frankly, they're not, uh, you know, world beaters, but they're, they're, they're better performed than most of these runners. Came back with the one trial. And again, didn't show a lot of pace, but does sit wide. Shahrazad's come out and won comfortably in town, sitting wide. Ocean Tempest, this is just a mile of horse in this race that would be very, very short price horses in this race, and he's held his own uh, without being extended too much. So, query with him the inside gate and the 1,000 metres does look like he will be suited over a little bit further, but does look to have ability, so... For me, if Juice shows up, he'll probably win. Uh, Rockefeller's the danger draw on the inside and very skinny at the moment are the bottom two in Smiling All, which is a very uh, limited type for mine, and the bottom one who's had its chances and just doesn't seem to want to win a race. So looking to bet against the two that have had a few tries, 
the likely race juice, the one I'd, I'd be keenest to play with, and, and Rockefeller looks the danger. Betting will be interesting here, and and late betting will be a key. If juice is right out the gate, I'd, I'd be a little bit worried. Um, I'm not big on following betting trends too much, but in this case, from this stable and the way this horse ran first up, would definitely be respecting the betting, and Rockefeller coming from, even though they're not the same stable, James and Anthony Cummings, I think that betting will tell the story late between the two of them. Race two, and a horse that anyone who has anything to do with my um, subscriptions or anything will be very aware of the horse Allegheny. Its first start didn't have much luck at Gosford, then second start uh, raced up to win and, and really just dug its toes in. Um, here, when it just got to the front and, and wanted to pull up, just didn't really know what, what it was all about. And you'll see, once it sees the other horse, it, it digs in again at a way too late and finishes pretty much full of running. So she's definitely got the ability, but whether she wants to win or not is a bit of an issue. Uh, she then went back to while, this time against the open class gallopers, but still jumped a mile in front for whatever reason. The jockey decided to restrain heavily and and try and get the horse back. Came back and then once, just when the horse was settling, decided to go forward again. Complete forgive, beaten three lengths. In saying that, this race does look easier. Uh, draws the inside gate, gets the senior jockey, probably gets its chance to break through. But... She does have issues, and I wouldn't be diving into short odds. Possibly bankering her in, in multis to run, you know, first or second might be the go here. I think there is a bit of value around in the shape of uh, Elysian Avenue, who was a bit little bit disappointing on debut after leading uh, the race behind Grexit. It wasn't, a, you know, a really deep race, but she definitely can improve off that effort and is early, you know, about uh, $51 in early market, so it can be, you know, a value runner for multiples, definitely. Fleeting Melody, Melody resumes, he has got a bit of toe, has had seven shots at the title already and not a winner, but does have a form around the likes of Kimberly Star, only beaten four lengths, two lengths, not a gypsy, and uh, it took ever so natural to a you know a long a neck when last seen it was almost a year ago and only had the one trial so a little bit of a question mark over how ready it will be especially from a stable that's not known for getting them ready so for mine to be a bit vulnerable I'd be playing it in in multiples but not to, to win probably Miss Bunny hops the other value runner I can see improving the tongue tie goes on after a disappointing effort last start and it did look like it would need a couple of runs to come good, so I'm, I'm be very surprised to not see it uh, improve significantly. Overgrown is the other one that's come up really short here, and I'm not sure why. Seven weeks between runs, back in trip, does get Abdullah on board, which is a big positive, uh, but not convinced that it's it's a winner either. So the value, or it looks to me to be. Listen, the Avenue, Miss Bunny Hop, and even Tapavino can improve off a pretty lackluster first up effort, but was on the heavy track there and probably wise to forgive it. That run can improve even on if it is heavy surface again. So, Allegheny, possibly the best horse in the race, but it does have its convictions. The value, Elysian Avenue, Miss Bunny Hop, Tapavino, for m messing around with multiples and throwing in fleeting out a melody and, and overgrown props possibly for the placings just because they're, they're, they're very capable of running a place but they are under their odds I would imagine for the win race 3 is not a race I'm too keen to betting but definitely want to watch from a, a future point of view uh, you've got horses like Kentucky Miss coming out of group 2 Magic Knight Sweet Embrace and, and the group 3 win its last 3 starts 
first up from a spell. Sam clip it into ride and uh, has had a, a, a trial. Um, Hysterical did look really uh, promising in its first preparation, really improved from run to run. She comes out of strong races, beat Kent convincingly its last start, even though it did have the pattern in its favour. Interesting to see the blinkers coming off here, and it doesn't show a lot of speed naturally, even though it did get on pace its first three runs. I'd imagine it probably gets a little bit off the speed here because there does look some strong natural pace and we'll finish off so maybe a thousand might be a bit short for it but still does look a contender Treviso is an interesting one that led throughout in a strong maiden at uh, Gosford with improvement went straight to 1200 and ran well again behind a really promising Russian revolution so now he draws inside has that natural speed and will be right there uh, could have been Look to have any amount of talent for Tracy Bartley. Its first preparation steamed over the top of of uh, tactical advantage. Its first start in a, in a solid little race where it definitely wasn't suited pace-wise. Um, possibly just have a look at the last part of its race there. Uh, off off the back of a really really strong trial. Had a few issues following that. And it was very easy in the betting at second start. Very interesting the way I like the way he pins his ears back and really wants to find the line. But that was his maiden win. This was his trial that he came off. Where he showed that he had some good ability. So then he went to Rose Hill off the back of some issues, raced back in the field against a solid tempo and ripped down the outside to only just narrowly miss Scarlet Rain who ended up starting sort of under 20 to 1 in the Golden Slipper and won a couple more races after this I believe. So that's good form, um, no trial which is interesting but definitely a type that can be improved. King of War is a bit of a sprue course. Was a short price beaten favourite. Two's on its last start. Uh, kind of looked like it had every chance. Has trialed again against Hysterical and uh, Thronum, who was the big winner on Saturday. So probably uh, does look like wound up to go. 7.35 and a thousand metre trial. No excuses. Probably wants a bit further than a thousand and is drawn awkwardly. So a bit of a worry with it. And it is the early favourite. Sons of Burke uh, is an interesting horse. He's a winner on debut at Musselbrook. Quick look at it. What I like about this is that the two of these obviously opening these margins right up on the, the beaten brigade. Um, Vixen Lass Came out and uh, and won well um, a couple of times following that race. Sorry, it was it had already won a couple of times, but prior to that race, so that was an open class handicap, and then uh, went to the Wellington Boot following that and ran okay. So that form's pretty solid and interesting to see. Has come back and trialed at the Beaumont over a thousand metres. Only obviously three runners in the race, but does do it impressively as you can see. Nearly impossible to take a line through that. So it comes back a little bit wary of it, not knowing how good it is, and the one down the bottom in. Uh, in Vitrix from the Waterhouse Yard, sorry, from Team Hawks Yard. Just the one start and pulled up injured. Does look like it's come back and trialed pretty solidly as well. So it looks like a bit of a late mail race, but I am interested in Kentucky 
Blass and Treviso could have been hysterical. Probably the four uh, main ones, betting and how they parade, will be a big part in, in the finish for them, I would imagine. Race four, we're looking at one of the better bets of the day for mine in Duke de Vega. It does look a lot of speed on paper. You've got quite a bit of competition here, especially for the mile. Duke de Vega comes off the two runs back, one, you know, 1,400 a mile, steps back, so stays at the mile, goes back to the provincials, blink is applied, gets the speed, gets everything you want to see. The form has been franked with fire, flaming firebird, firebird, what is it called? Fighting firebird. Firebird flyer winning the, the race here, and this is Duke de Vega finishing the race off nicely, comfortably beating the rest of these horses and can only be improved. Does tick all the boxes for mine. Uh, Lethal Dream's an interesting horse coming off two brutal paces. Uh, strong pace, on pace both times and there has been some winning form come out of uh, especially it's that last start performance. Fifth run back, or well, this is sixth run in its first preparation and has had some really tough tough runs to deal with and now um, has to back it up again so it's probably you know the danger for mine if it puts it if it's still alive and hasn't been battered too much by those efforts um, over the M and Diamond Media next best but really does look Duke de Vega's race to lose Race five and a bit of a small field, but not a bad little betting race on early betting. Keen on the chances of the top two here in Last Witness and Oscar's Choice. Last Witness has that uh, was a what was a first up solid effort when narrowly beaten here. Went back to the trials, then a solid winner beating a, a few subsequent winners uh, at the Beaumont track. There's already been one. Uh, Metropolitan winner in Super Tycoon come out of that race and uh, ISO Rich Echo Prince um, winning at the Provincials and with uh, ISO Rich also placed in town so and a country winner in Paray who went to the Port Macquarie area and won so that was a really strong Provincial race then went to town and ran a huge race when bombed the start and got way too far back I'm thinking that run may have taken the, the gloss off the horse and it's really struggled to back it up over the 1350, back to 1200 here with 24 days between runs. Keen in this grade at the set weights, he's just really well placed. Oscar's choice was a, a good thing beaten for mine. First up over the 1000 metres, jumped to the 1200, did a lot of work on a, far, a solid pace in harder grade. It drops back in trip and should get a bit of pace up front to suit it, hoping that Spriggs takes a bit of a sit and lets the horse find its feet early. It does have a nice turn of foot when allowed to do that. Um, this is Australia comes up quite short for mine, hoping that Mr Snowman does take part in the race and puts a bit of pressure on it early because it can miss the kick. And then that should set the race up for Last Witness and Oscar's Choice. Uh, race six is a, another race I'm thinking will be a, a parade special. It's got a few queries here. Fashion Snips, interesting horse. If we just look back to its win first up last time in. Uh, the Muddling Run Race or an even tempo at best. It's last on the outside here. The horse in front is a Dali horse at the time, it's now being sold, but has won three or four races up on the north coast uh, since moving there, since being sold. This is Fashion Snips out wide. There's everything wrong, laying in, laying in. Doesn't want to go straight and really only knuckles down for 50 metres and puts a margin on the rest of the horses in that time. So it's a horse packed with ability, went up in grade and only got beaten. So the 2.2 by Kimberly Star 
2.8 in town again over the mile on heavy track in it's you know that was that's all good form for this it came back and had the one run 46 days later and, and then was put out again so it's obviously a horse with a few issues but if, if it's got its mind on the job even with the blinkers off it can finish over the top of these if it feels like it celebrate sat outside a fast tempo at last time and uh, battle on strongly um, we'll see it, it takes the lead quite early in the straight sorry it does it takes a clear lead early in the straight um, for racing a little bit greenly ends up on the outside fence but holds feel pretty comfortably that was its first run since being gelded so it, it's open to further improvement um, my surfer girls come out one since at the Kimbler timing was a huge winner a 10 length 8, eight 7.8 length winner last time in a very average race at Canberra on a mad leaders track so I, I'd be keen to I'm not going to say it can't win but I'd be keen to bet around it here there is a bit of pressure and it probably will find the front but it does need to improve for mine the horse does look a bit of a knockout down the bottom here is a horse called La La Loopsy four year old having its first start here at Maruya of all places uh, that's it missing the kick so misses the start badly thousand metre maiden there's no tempo about and it's just pulls its way around the field and forced to make like a six or seven hundred metre run which is not easy to do in a thousand metre race even in a maiden at Maruya and they have got home considerably quick against average so even though they've gone out slow they've got home quite well and it's comfortably raced away from them so the horse has something went straight to 1200 its next start straight to a class two and for whatever reason they led on it did get a, a, a soft enough time in front but um, ran fourth and not disgraced beaten the length by you know Art Nouveau pinched me grammar school which they'd again all be fairly short in this race so entertaining it hopefully ridden a bit more quiet this time and think it can definitely win and Mr. Snowman's the jewel acceptor from the previous race, so uh, very interested in fashion snips. I think Lindy Lou's coming out. Celebrate can improve. Timing, yes, but don't want to be taking short odds and happy to bet around it if it is short. And when I say short, something around the $3.50 mark is probably the minimum I'd be wanting to take about it uh, if Lindy Lou comes out and La La Loops is the, the one I'm interested in to back to beat timing. The last two races really not appealing at all for me and I'd rather bypass them. Uh, Granite Belt probably is an interesting horse but does get a bit of a, a funny jockey change and prefer to stay out to tell you the truth. So the last two races are, are no bet races for mine. I hope that helps everyone. There are a few, I will send prices and sheets through to everyone but uh, just wanted to explain that there are a few variables for the day and that betting and late betting will be very uh, worthwhile taking note of for quite a few of the races. Thanks guys, good luck.